Good morning and uh, happy Thanksgiving Tuesday. Uh, let's call it that anyway. Hope you had a great long weekend with your family and friends and enjoyed the uh, robust weather that we had. It was a little nippy uh, on a couple of those days, but it's really a beautiful fall. Uh, this is Impact, and I am pleased to welcome back to the studio uh, Stephanie Myrick from Spinal Cord Injury Alberta. You know, the show has been going on now for about a year and a half, and so now we're, we're having returnees <laughs> because you kind of run out of subjects after a while. Uh, that said, I just want to put a plug in that uh, I am looking for guests for future editions of uh, Impact over the next couple of months. So if you have a story that you would like to tell and share on the radio, about the impact that you or somebody that you know is making, by all means, give me a call or send me an email or any number of ways to reach me through social media. I would love to hear your idea. But Stephanie's here with us today. She was with us way back. Um, she, she seems to recall it was cold the last time she was here. It might have been February. And we were talking about uh, her career and her organization with uh, Spinal Cord Injury Alberta. But today, one of the one of the interesting things that we want to talk about is an event that's coming up this coming weekend called Adapted Sports Day. That's I got right. that. I didn't even write it down. You <laughs> noticed that. Adapted Sports Day. So, Stephanie, welcome. And tell, what, what is Adapted Sports Day? Adapted Sports Day, um, October 14th, so this coming Saturday, we're having uh, guests up from Edmonton, Wheelchair Sports Association and Parasports. They're coming up to do a demonstration of adapted sports. So we're going to have floor hockey and uh, wheelchair basketball, tennis and rugby, uh, floor curling, sit volleyball, and we're actually going to have a wheelchair dance demonstration as well. So basically it's open to everybody. You don't have to have a disability to come and try it, but it's come out and try the adapted sports because if we get enough people interested, we can do this a on a monthly basis. So I'm seeing the wheelchair mm -hmm. and a number of those sports mentioned wheelchair, but there were some other ones. So um, I was a big floor hockey fan. How do you play floor hockey with, as an adaptive sport? Can you help me out with that one? You're in a wheelchair, basically, and you just have your hockey stick on the ground. Wow. Yeah. So you got to, that would be kind of hard. So you'd have to put your stick down to then r move the wheelchair, then grab your stick again. Yeah. Cool. And they're a little bit more, um, they can be difficult for somebody who's not used to it, but for somebody who's been in a wheelchair for a while, it's kind of second nature. So what is, the, what is the primary purpose of the event? Is it to expose people uh, with disabilities to opportunities that they could have in the community, or is it really to allow a person to walk a mile in a person's shoes who happens to have a disability? It's a bit of both. We want people without disabilities to understand that people with disabilities can do, still do all the same things that you can. They just have to do it differently. But it's also to let the people in the community with disabilities know that there are recreation and sports out there that they can take part in. And so, and it's also to get them out into the community more. One of the, uh, the things that you and your organization constantly work on is, is access and accessibility in community. And it really hits home, doesn't it, when you, you begin to get a, a sort of an internal sense of how difficult the most benign normal things can be for somebody in a wheelchair and I imagine in terms of sports if you actually get to be in that wheelchair and try to whatever shoot a basketball or whatever it's going to be kind of an illuminating moment it is because if well with wheelchair basketball for example you're sitting in the basketball or in the wheelchair with the basketball but the basketball net is still at the regulation 10 feet mm. so it doesn't get any lower you still have to shoot more arm strength, but people in wheelchairs tend to have more arm strength than most people anyway. You mentioned volleyball. Um, how do you do the adapted volleyball? So sit volleyball, the net is lower and you're sitting on the ground. It's mostly played by amputees and they just it's just passing the same as regular volleyball. You're just sitting on the ground for it. Oh, so you, so you don't move, you just sit? Yeah. Oh my, I can't even, that'd be very hard. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. My favorite, though, is wheelchair rugby because it's like a demolition derby in wheelchairs. They have specially adapted wheel wheelchairs that have like the big metal thing around them. And they're taking each other out. They're crashing into each other. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the event, you said, is at Father Mercury. Yes. Yeah, in the gymnasium, obviously. Yeah. Um, how is it happening? It's not just your organization. You have a bunch of different organizations helping to make it happen. Yeah, so Wheelchair Sports Association actually got in touch with me back in May about doing this. They have the money to bring the program up here. So I was just told I had to find volunteers and a place for it. 
it's been a little bit more than that, but that's okay. Um, yeah, they're coming up, they're setting it up, we're going to have it throughout the day, so wheelchair rugby might be from 10 until 12 and then something else after that. But we have both gyms as well, so we'll be able to put off a couple simultaneous, simultaneously. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, this, the people that are coming up, are they teachers or are they actually athletes? Or a combination of both? So they'll be teaching people how to use the wheelchairs and everything, but they're actually both nonprofit organizations that bring recreation to different parts of the province. Hmm. What, uh, what does success look like for you if this event is just a home run? If it's a home run, we have enough people show up and give it a try, and I get to actually keep some of the equipment so that we can continue this on a monthly basis. Hmm. That's my end goal, is to get recreation in the community for people with disabilities. But like I said, you don't have to have a disability to come play it. So your, your comment uh, suggests to me that we, we don't have a lot of recreational opportunities for people that are mobility challenged. We don't have any. None? None. None? No. So this is an important event. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and so let's run through a couple practical things. Time of the event. It runs from 10 until 5 Okay. on Saturday. Is there a fee? There is no fee. Okay, so anybody can come. Is there an age range? Uh, no age range. Everybody is welcome. Um, the only thing I would suggest is if you have probably kids up to age five, it might be a little bit more difficult for them in the wheelchairs. So mm. just to keep that in mind. To put it into context for people that are listening, and I, you probably don't know the exact number, but it would be nice to have a sense of how many people in Fort McMurray, the urban center, might be mobility challenged and be somebody that does not have access to recreational opportunities? That's a really hard number. Um, I have about 26 clients in the community um, that runs from spinal cord injuries to cerebral palsy to spina bifida because I mostly deal with mobility issues. But um, the number of people in the community, I mean, you're looking at people with MS and uh, types of autism and that kind of stuff, like, I, I couldn't put an exact number on it. Hmm. And giving um, these individuals that opportunity can make a world of difference. It can. I mean, right now, like I said, I had 26 clients in the community, so that's 26 people in the community who are in wheelchairs. How many have you seen? Uh, I've seen a few of them. <laughs> but not that many, no. Right, yeah. so they're, they're really, a lot of them can be housebound. They don't get out as much because, well, either the whatever is going on is not accessible or mm. there isn't something for them to go to. We're in the middle of a, a municipal election campaign, uh, election coming up next uh, Monday or this coming Monday, I guess now. Um, one of the issues that uh, you talk about is is in terms of accessibility in terms of going into businesses, public facilities, and those kind of things. How important is, is it for uh, candidates to understand that this is an issue that they need to be thinking about and that it is an issue as a community that we can actually do a much better job of? The whole barrier-free idea is one that they really should be looking at because we want Fort McMurray to be an age, aging in place community. And if you're barrier-free, um, you're barrier free for everybody. It's not just the person in the wheelchair, it's the senior with the walker as well, or the senior with limited mobility. So barrier free doesn't just cover people in wheelchairs, it covers the, a broad spectrum. So it's really something they should be looking into because we're really not that accessible. Give us, a, without being specific, give, give the, the public a, a, an, an example. What do you mean? Um, um, no using names. You don't want me to be excessive, <laughs> to be specific. <laughs> uh, even something um, as simple as going to a restaurant. A yeah. lot of restaurants in town have bar stool seating. So for somebody with a mobility issue or something like that, getting up into those chairs, I mean, it's difficult. And in some cases, if you're in a wheelchair, you can't sit down anywhere because, you know, the tables are four feet off the ground. Yeah. So. Would another example be washroom facilities in public spaces that were <laughs> designed and built in the 70s and 80s that have two doors, one, one door to get in, you're in a little vestibule, then you got to go through a second door. Is that a good example? It is. And another thing about washrooms is you see a lot of able-bodied people using them, and that's fine. But then if you come out and there's somebody in a wheelchair sitting there waiting, 
they can't go to another stall. <laughs> you can. <laughs> so maybe just leave them for the people with accessibility issues. Yeah. Uh, Stephanie Myrick is my guest from Spinal Cord Injury Alberta, uh, located in the Red Pole Center. Stephanie's working with a group of people to put on an event called uh, Adaptive, Adaptive Sports Day at Father Mercury High School, running on Saturday from, did you say 10 to 5? 10 to 5. 10 to 5. Free event for the entire family where you get to actually try what an adapted sports is, a sport is like. Yes. Uh, volleyball, <clears throat> rugby, you said. Basketball, uh, basketball, tennis, floor hockey, floor hockey, that'd be awesome, floor curling, it's yeah. going to be fun, it's coming up Saturday, we're going to take a break and come back with more of Impact on 91.1 The Bridge right after this. Welcome back to the show, my guest Stephanie Myrick from Spinal Cord Injury Alberta. How was your Thanksgiving long weekend? It was good, quiet. Did you have turkey? I No, we had chicken. We don't really do turkey. <laughs> we had ham. <laughs> ham was good. Yeah. Yeah, it felt like a long, long weekend. It was beautiful. And here we are back. It's uh, next thing you know, we're going to start talking about the Christmas word. I guess Not Halloween's first, Halloween. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Halloween story pops up like September 1. Or maybe it was before that. I don't know. It's bizarre. Yeah, the season just goes and goes and so many different events going on. We've talked a little bit about your adaptive sports uh, day coming up on Saturday. Uh, it is, uh, again, at Father Mercury from 10 to 5, free for everybody. Your chance to play and experience adaptive sports. Even if you're a fully able person, that's part of the reason we want you to come out, is yeah. to walk or roll a mile in someone's shoes who happens to be disabled. Or chair. Yeah, chair. Yeah. The other thing you mentioned off the air is that you've recently been appointed to um, one of the council, Premier's Council Committees. Tell us about that. I was appointed back in um, June to the Premier's Council for the Status of Persons with Disabilities. So now what does that mean? We're an advisory committee, so um, I'm not allowed to advocate. However, I can take information given to me by community members back to the Premier's Council and basically what we do is we do up a report and we pass it on to the Minister of Community and Social Inclusion. And then they take it and go from there. So you've been to a couple of meetings so far, been involved in a number of meetings? Yes. <laughs> and and what, are you, what are you hearing about this particular issue across the province from other colleagues? It's really the same issues. It's The problem is there are no policies in place currently for people with disabilities. Um, Ontario is the only province that has a Disabilities Act. There is no federal act right now, although they're working on one. Um, but that's still another two years away. So without policies, there's no enforcement. So barrier-free, while it's a wonderful idea and there's um, guidelines for it, the guidelines aren't enforced. So a place doesn't have to be barrier free to meet code. So if I'm hearing you correctly, we in Alberta do not have policy that says, well, if you're building a business and you're putting an entrance to business, it needs to meet the following specifications to be barrier free. Right. There's no provincial. Now, different municipalities probably have like their bylaws and standards. But even that doesn't always get enforced. Hmm. Is the government actively thinking about moving in the direction of Ontario? The federal government is. They're working on a Canadian Social Inclusion Act, I believe it's called. Um, but uh, the actual provincial government, as far as I know, they're not. What's it like? I, I sat on one of these Premier's Councils. Uh, I was on the Premier's Council for Culture for a couple of years. What has it been like for you to engage with colleagues, and I know they come from all different sectors of the province. What's it been like? Well, usually I'm the most passionate person in the room when it comes to disabilities, but I have to say our first couple of meetings have left me kind of exhausted. They're there out there. <laughs> um, they are really, really great people. They are, like I said, really passionate about disabilities, and I'm hoping over the next three years, I believe it's three years we're appointed to the council, that we're gonna do some really great things. And I guess you get to be a voice for the North as well. Yes, I'm the Northeast uh, representative. Oh, that's awesome. So it's, yeah, I'll be heading out to Fort Chip and out into the more rural areas as well. Now in those meetings, are you dealing with uh, the actual minister of that portfolio or is it a deputy minister or a mix of both? Oh, it's both. 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, we great. actually had uh, supper with them when I was down in Edmonton for our orientation. It was mm. very cool. Yeah, so if you're listening, it's, it's a way for the government to actually have an ear to what's happening on the ground across the province. And so they set up these premier's councils to give them yet another tool, really. And I know that uh, the one I was involved with, one of the deputy ministers said, I just want you to know that what the work that you guys have done actually has helped inform and generate policy. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I'm cool. really hopeful that we're going to make a huge difference and actually push towards having the policies put in place. Yeah. What else is going on in your world, Stephanie? Well, we have International Day for Persons with Disabilities coming up on December 3rd. That one, we're going to do a Dear Everybody campaign. And what we're looking for is if you have a disability and you'd like people to know um, what it's like, you would simply write on the card, Dear Everybody, this is what I want you to know about my disability. And then we're going to do a public campaign with them. Mm -hmm. So for example, dear everybody, it's condescending when you talk to us like we're babies, that type of thing. Right. And it was actually started in Ontario as a way to stop bullying for children with disabilities. So we're taking it to a different level. The word disability is an interesting word. Um, uh, that, I imagine, ranges from anybody with mobility issues to, you mentioned, uh, perhaps people with autism and various other uh, uh, conditions. Is that fair? Is it, the range is very broad, I imagine. Yeah, there's actually five pillars that people would fall under. So mm. there's mobility and cognitive, and then there's vision and hearing and so on, yeah. yeah I have to say, one of the best experiences that I ever had is I'm not sure if you saw when we did Hometown the Musical at Keanu Theatre. I didn't. So it was a very big musical with a cast of about 110 people. And among the cast were a number of people who were autistic, uh, somebody who had Asperger's. Mm -hmm. And um, watching those individuals come to life and be accepted by the group uh, was one of the most beautiful things I ever saw. They, they were given a chance to just be a regular member of the cast. And the transformation was awe-inspiring. And that's really what we'd like to push for, is just yeah. people just accepting them uh, for who they are and not what they have. Yeah. Coming up December the... Third. The, December 3rd, and it's International People with Mobilities... No, International Day for Persons with Disabilities. <sighs> Nothing's ever words. short. Lots of words. <laughs> well, and how do people, where will they see things about it? We're still in the very beginning planning stages, okay. so it's... We're hoping to make it a public campaign and have it like on buses and stuff, but we have to see where we get the funding. Yeah, well, it's a great initiative. My guest today is Stephanie Myrick from Spinal Cord Injury, Alberta. We need to take another break. Uh, you are listening to Impact. It is a team effort of United Way, Fuse Social, Shaw TV, Fort McMurray, who come and film us almost every week. They missed us last week. We missed them. Uh, I looked awful last week anyway, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> and our friends right here at 91.1 The Bridge. Good morning. Welcome back to the show. Hope your, your, your leaf raking is going well because almost all the leaves are already off the trees. I think it's a, it seems really early to me, um, but it's a, it's a pretty beautiful kind of fall. We haven't been burdened with a lot of snow like our colleagues to the south have, and I know there's a heavy snowfall warning for parts of Alberta here uh, this morning. Though, Stephanie, we did have a little smattering of snow was it yesterday morning? It all is a blur, but it, yeah. It was yesterday morning. Yeah, and I had to scrape, scrape my window this morning, which I did not like. Uh, anyway, it's coming. It's, uh, we may as well embrace it. Uh, Stephanie Myrick is my guest with Spinal Cord Injury Alberta. Stephanie is doing a lot of things, but one of the, the things that's coming up very quickly, in fact, this weekend is Adaptive uh, Sports Day. Uh, up at Father Mercury High School. And you know, if you're hearing this and it's ringing a bell with you, if it sounds really intriguing, please share it with somebody. Share it with somebody you know. You know what, boy, that'd be a great activity for, for uh, my, my neighbor and their kids to go up and do. It is free for everybody. It is, yep. And um, again, run through the different sports that people can actually try. Excuse me, I got a frog in my throat. With various, uh, you know, whether it's in a wheelchair or actually playing volleyball on the floor. So there's wheelchair basketball, rugby, and tennis. And then... <laughs> <coughs> Keep going. <laughs> uh, sit volleyball, floor hockey, curling, and... 
wheelchair dance as Did well. you say curling? Yes. How, floor curling. What is floor curling? I'm not sure. It's like a shuffleboard maybe. <laughs> I guess. And, and uh, wheelchair dancing. Yes. So like doing staying alive in a wheelchair, that kind of thing? Yeah. Um, we actually have a local girl, um, Sasha McDonald. Uh, she has cerebral palsy and she'll be coming in to do um, a wheelchair dance demonstration and then I'm going to loan her a couple of my wheelchairs that I have and she's going to teach people how to dance in wheelchairs. I think it's a fact that people that have disabilities have a lot of ability. They do. Yeah. Yeah. It's a language thing, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Um, I believe the quote goes, see my ability, not my disability. Yeah, I have a son, that, of course, my older son Dylan has cerebral palsy and the things that I've seen him do in his life uh, is pretty staggering. Yeah, I don't think, I don't, as a parent, I don't see it as a disability, I just see a lot of ability. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So this is an opportunity for you to really get a better sense of uh, what a person who has a mobility challenge might go through and try some different things. Um, yep. And yeah. I mean, if you're like me, I can't skate. So um, I'm that person walking like the penguin across the parking lot. But take something like sledge hockey, for example. You're sitting down on a sled on the ice and you push yourself using two sticks. I could do that. So even if you're not the most um, athletic when it comes to regular sports, you might really excel at something like adaptive sports. So You have a group of people coming in from Edmonton to put this on. Mm -hmm. What is the, the key objective of Adaptive Sports Day? The number one thing you're trying to achieve? The number one thing would be to get enough interest and enough people wanting to try it to have it go on afterwards. So mm. on a monthly basis, I could, if I could have the people interested, we can do this on a monthly basis. It's, it's key to remember that people with mobility challenge or disabilities, at the moment, there is very little, perhaps none, no uh, recreational opportunities for them in Fort McMurray. No. And uh, right now we're sticking with um, more of the summer sports, but I'm hoping to do maybe some winter sports probably in February or March as well. So Very cool. the sledge hockey and uh, maybe sit skiing and stuff if we can hopefully get Vista Ridge to partner with us on that. Again, it's coming up Saturday, Father Mercury from 10 till 5. Come one, come all. It's absolutely free. Stephanie, thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you for having and me. And all that you do to um, promote, advocate for a, a better life and more opportunities for people with both disabilities and a lot of ability as well. Thank you. You've been listening to Impact. It is a team effort of United Way, Fuse Social, Shaw TV, Fort McMurray, and 91.1 The Bridge. <laughs>